If you're familiar with animation curves and splines, then this will make sense. If you're not, then just remember that these two points mean the value is going from this to that. If this line was straight, it would mean it's a linear change. And if there's a spline or a curve, then that means there is some kind of acceleration or deceleration happening. And then if you want, just leave me a comment and I will do a tutorial just for animation splines for you guys if you want. Moving on, let's go ahead and look at what's next. So now this is rendering, and as you can see down here, it says playback is one second per frame. In my work, it goes up to seven, I would say five to seven seconds per frame, depending on the complexity of whatever it is that I'm doing. So this is normal, and this depends on your hardware. So the more powerful computer you have, the faster you're going to work. Okay. So this is interesting. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. So the first thing is this Jeremy text, right? Let me click on it and show you. Crazy, right? So why is this text so big and that's just the, the canvas size is so small, right? What, what are we doing here? Well, at this point, we are using this text, not as text, but as a design element. So here's the text, and then the next node is a zoom. So now the zoom is working. All right, so this is the animation. So if you, if I show you the first frame of it right here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm using this pink, this peach color, almost like a shape here. And as you progress, it zooms in and it, the band becomes smaller and then as it continues to zoom in also i believe there's motion blur on here let me check yeah so if you look at this edge there's motion blur and how do we apply motion blur whatever is being animated so in this case the transform is being animated you go into the animate the transform properties and you can see that the motion blur is on and to turn on preview of motion blur, you can just right click right here on the transport bar and there's an option here to turn it on and off. So I have it on right now for you guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and play it. So now you can see, so as this word is being zoomed in, it goes from being a shape to a word, okay? So we've started off this animation by using a lot of, a lot of typography as shapes and then we have typography itself, spelling out words and stuff. And in this case, we have a gray area where we were flip-flopping between typography being used as a shape as opposed to being used as a information, as a word. Okay, so this is the zoom. The zoom has a very uh, acute sort of pronounced animation spline attached to it, as you can see right here. So there's a lot of zooming going on as the animation starts within the first three or four frames, and then it tapers off and goes really slow. Okay. So now, after that, there's another transform node, and this one is uh, called left, and I'm turning them on and off by hitting control P, which is short for uh, pass through, which means uh, to disable a node and let the information pass through to the next one. Okay, so control P, turn off, turn on. Let's go ahead and render this. So now you will see that there's three things. There's the Jeremy text, then there's the zoom animation, and then there's a separate left animation that's going to move this text uh, out to the left, okay? And I'm going into detail at this point because I wanna show you guys how this is building up. And this is gonna be, the way that we're gonna build this up in the first 60 frames, is pretty much going to lay the groundwork for how everything else is going to go on top. Okay, so there's a motion, as you can see, there's a motion blur attached to that as well. All right, here we go. So as you can see, zooming in and moving left. Now, if you're wondering why it's coming to an abrupt stop right there, it's because something else is actually on top of it at that point that you're about to see. So it doesn't really make sense for me to go and animate something that's hidden 
right? It's, if you think in terms of layers, it's like a layer underneath. I don't really care what it's doing because the viewer is only going to see the top stuff, right? Okay, let's move on. Next, we have this little section, the little lime green section. It's called elements, okay? And I'm going to skip all this for now. I'm just going to go ahead and hit Control P, turn all these off. Okay, and go to the next one, and this is called Peach. Okay, what is it? It's a background node with a transform attached to it. All right, so what is this Peach uh, node doing? It's just a block. Uh, if I click on it, you can see it. So it's just moving in front. And like I said earlier, the reason why the text had that abrupt stop was because it was already obscure at that point, so it didn't really matter. Okay, uh, let's go and look at these elements now that we skipped earlier. I'm going to go ahead and control pass, control pass through, and we're going to go ahead and render these out. Okay. So the first stack is the slash element. All right. And that is actually just a text node. And it has this uh, slash, the forward slash. And then you have a transform, a duplicate, and it's getting merged. So as you can see from the diamonds on the nodes themselves, uh, there are some animations going on. So if you look at the slash element itself, I usually don't animate anything inside of uh, text nodes. I like to do the animations in separate transform nodes. But in this case, I have something that's animated. So let's go ahead and click here and find it. Here it is. So the opacity is being animated. Let's go ahead and zoom in on here. And so as you can see, it kind of goes from uh, invisible to sort of fading in, right? And then next we have a uh, transform and that's moving it to the left okay and if you click on the spline you can see that there is a um, a spline that is a, a weighted ease in ease out so an ease in ease out curve means that it's slowly starting and slowly ending with sort of a normal speed in the middle but in this case it's slowly starting but the end is very slowly stopping okay so think of it like a short, slow start, regular speed in the middle, and a long, slow stop at the end. So it's kind of weighted. And then there's a duplicate node here. Uh, it's uh, duplicating these slashes eight times. And there's a time offset. So every two frames, the next duplicate is coming into view and so on. Okay. And then the same thing sort of happens over here. If you look. Let me go ahead and play it. So you have these crosses and you have these squares. So the squares are basically a background node with a square rectangular mask on it. And it's, it's got this little sort of twisty look to it. So it, it does this little angle animation I'll show you. Uh, right there, there's the angle animation. It has a spline of its own. And then to make the cross, what I did was I made a small uh, line, I'll show you. So as you can see, there's this, so this line, and then the other line is being merged on top, and then there's a animation that's moving it left, a separate animation that's giving it rotation, and there's duplication, of course. And somebody asked me earlier, why would you have two transform nodes in sequence attached? Why not just do all your animation in one? Well, it all depends. Normally, you would have one transform node and all the animations happening inside that with two notable exceptions. So the first one would be, maybe I didn't do all the animation of that shape in one go. Maybe I made it a certain way and then came back two days later as I was working on the composition and maybe added a rotation at a later stage. At that point, I might have made a separate node for that. And the other situation where you might have two uh, transform nodes in a sequence is for 
ease of editing, right? So if I make a, a transform node and I call it angle animation and another one called scale animation, then it's easier for me to go back and look through 500 nodes and find the node that I'm looking for and make an adjustment, especially if like a client says, hey, this is how I want it done. And you have to go back and change a few things. It's better to have them in separate compartmentalized little areas. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on.